back. And this is so now we're just getting our third session for this morning's interview. And uh, we are switching gears. We're joined by some junior athletes, or, or I should say junior champions, <laughs> um, this morning. And we're here to talk about the under 20 uh, championships. And uh, this morning, we're in our studio, we have uh, Dion Sutherland, who is the president of the Athletics Association, as well as Mia Sylvester and Kirk Elringtons, who have recently comp uh, competed and, uh, as we can see from their medals. Um, have, have <laughs> so congrats, first of all, and thank, thank you, you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> yes, so um, speak to us, Mr. Sutherland, about the Athletics Association and how you were able to garner uh, young athletes such as Mia and Kirk to, to join in and showcase their talents. Well, the Belize Athletics Association, as you know, is the um, premier association for anything athletics in the country. Mm -hmm. um, our responsibility is to um, plan and execute all uh, athletic events. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a calendar of events, both local, regional, and international. Um, when we speak to regional, we just attended the Central American Junior Championship. And um, unfortunately, we were supposed to go to the Senior Championship mm -hmm. um, that happened last weekend. But due to the weather in um, Nicaragua, yes. we opt for safety of our athletes and um, we opt to, to pass on that one. Mm. Um, but these are two of the athletes that, um, that did well in the junior competition. Um, they have a few more junior years under their belt, so they'll be able to, to uh, fool you in on their performances and on their, their training and abilities going forward. All right, okay. so Mia, <laughs> talk to us about how you prepped and uh, what you think is the most you took away from the U20 championship? Well, I work with a Cuban coach and she helps with my preparation plan. Mm -hmm. We do gym work, technique training, and this helped me to pick at the right time for the Central American Games. And when I went, what I took away the most was getting the record and hearing my name being called on the microphone for the record for short put and get a new personal best for discus throwing. Damn, <laughs> my job. <laughs> <laughs> And Kirk? Well, for my long jump, I did the same thing. Mm -hmm. I have a different coach, Mr. Fred Evans, but every evening it's workout without miss and just keep working towards it and improving the technique and skills towards the sport. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to get into a little bit of your history when it comes to your sport. Uh, what made you um, become, I don't want to say interested, but what kind of pushed you towards uh, both your um, your categories and why do you think that more Belizean students or young young adults should be involved in these kinds of championships or events I should say well for me I was a, I saw a friend did it and mm -hmm. I want to try it and when I tried I felt like it helped me release stress it helped me push myself because not many times you see someone spinning or doing shot put not the most popular spot in Belize yeah I hope it will come more popular and mm -hmm. many times young kids no, don't even know the spot shot put neither discuss so I'm hoping in the future that more people try out for this sport and come future champions what, what caused your like initial interest in, in, in those sports well, Mr. Evans introduced me to this sport originally, <laughs> and he, he noticed the skill that I had power and agility and coordination. He said I could go find this sport. Mm -hmm. So I trusted his instinct and I followed, and now I work with the Cuban coach who got me even one step further. Do you think that that was something that you initially thought you could, you could do? I mean, like you rightfully mentioned, it's not a popular sport, especially in, in Belize. So how, um, that's why I asked about your training, right? So how do you prep for something like that? And um, how, do you think that there should be more initiative for this type of sport? Well, initially I never knew I was going to make it this far in this person <laughs> short foot. So when we started off, it was like mostly technique, teaching me how to throw the ball, teaching okay. me how to release the discus. Mm -hmm. And then as I got better, we up the training so we start doing more gym work for strength more coordination and go to more advanced techniques to help me go further in the sport so. okay and switching gears to kirk because it little it's, it's mm -hmm. definitely different from it's from different. mia 
Well, it's a completely different sport, so yes, it's different. But Mr. Evans is the same one who um, got me into it mm -hmm. in the primary school. In primary school, um, they had the primary school national regionals, and Mr. Evans scouted me for almost all the events that I did because I was an all rounder. Mm -hmm. But over the years, I decided that I liked long jump, and then Mr. Evans advised me to do the triple jump as well. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to get used to the triple jump because it's a lot of technical work. Mm -hmm. But after a while, I decided I like both of them, so I'll stick to long jump and I'll stick to triple jump and I just keep working on those. Mm -hmm. um, same thing, gym work. It took me a while to get into gym work because, as well, I'm not the <laughs> bulkiest <laughs> person, right? So, although I don't look it now, I can squat around. 200 pounds or over and I'm just working on that keeping it steady okay. and uh, Mr. Sutherland can you talk about the development uh, well the, first of all the importance of, of, of having uh, our athletes compete in regional competitions mm -hmm. and, and also sort of how, how we're preparing them here on the ground for, for those types well you know it's difficult because I would say for one is no, it's very difficult even two two factors um with the pandemic since 2019 mm -hmm. it's been very difficult to get people out to the track mm -hmm. um two um there's a there's a lot of focus on academics in order to get back kids to that level that they were um, especially in, in in um in school and maybe a third factor would be um volunteers it's difficult to get people out there on a regular basis to work with these kids i mean people like the idea of the the kids going and meddling mm -hmm. and and looking good and like the country looks good but they don't recognize the 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 work it right. takes yeah. not not on us as the executive because we're not the ones out there with them on a daily basis mm -hmm. but when you have limited number of coaches for example like we have two cuban coaches that the olympic committee brought in for us and then we have Mr. Evans who is out there every day. He's close to 80 years old, he's, he's going down. Um, but he still works with these kids on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And so those factors and, and others mm -hmm. make it very difficult to get kids interested. And with the primary school and the high school um, track or sporting program to, came into a halt during COVID, it's like three years. Mm -hmm. And that is where basically the association fed off those those competitions for the mm -hmm. primary and secondary and then we scouted those athletes to bring them up into the program so that has been a, a, a real stalemate for us over the years what we have planned um, with our international body um, the world athletics is that we had a um, program known as talent search and that program was to happen last year um, <coughs> funded by world athletics that we would have gone into the different districts and, and have two days event whereby we look for young at least between the age of 12, um, 8 to 15 or 8 to, to 13 and then look at their, their abilities, their, their basic um, skills and then bring them, try to work with them over, over a period of time. Um, because of COVID again we had to lax on that program and so now we're looking to, to, con to do that program. We wanted to do it um, for this summer. Mm -hmm. Again, because of a, a lot of shift in dynamics with World Athletics, um, it, it, it doesn't look feasible for July, but it's something that we still want to, because we have to bring younger athletes into the fold in order to move them uh, forward. But mm -hmm. again, along with the athletes coming in, we always want people to volunteer their time. And of course, we are responsible to have these coaches program, technical, technical programs and coaches program, so that people can have maybe a level one, level two, mm -hmm to be able to help these athletes and, and I think what we are basically asking and what we will be asking is for you know we're not asking you to be out there every day but if we if we introduce you to this program if we put all the funds and finances to get this program then at least give us two days or, or three days out of the week to spend an hour with these kids to do what they have to do mm -hmm. and that is in that way one we'll have more athletes competing mm -hmm. and two we'll be able to have more events here so that they can they can not only be prepared here but be prepared to represent us better in regional and international competition so basically that is our projection forward and we're hoping that 
not only um, those that are uh, a part of athletics now would, 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 would continue to feed, but those that see the interest or are interested in coming and say, you know what, let me come out there and give an hour mm -hmm. a week or two hours a week and, and come on board. We will be able to, to train you at least to that level where you feel competent enough to say, I will pass this skill on to these athletes. How many um, athletes more or less are, <coughs> are um, a part of the association that you train for the Olympic Games? Well, um, for different, different levels of athletes and different numbers. For example, in, in total, including our infant and junior athletes, we're looking at over 200 athletes. Wow. 200, well, I'm, I'm, I'm mm. talking about overall, no? Mm -hmm. um, in different um, events. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> for example, we have a, a club in, um, in Placencia that has over 100 uh, members, and that's just one club, you know? So when you look at that and you put all the other athletes from, from the different regions, because we have athletes from PG, you know, we have athletes from Corozal, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> it's difficult at times to really get them together. To, together mm -hmm. Um, other than national championships or when we have individual um, time trials, mm -hmm. they would come in. But again, they are always looking, can you pay this for us? Can you bring us here? And sometimes it's difficult for an association that does not have a steady flow of funds. Mm -hmm. But we tried our best. We tried our best to assist. Um, mm -hmm. um, um, you may not know, you may know that um, in April of this year, we had our, our new elections. We elected a new, a new body. And um, <coughs> We have some of the um, incumbent members, and we have some new members mm -hmm. that, that bring new ideas and new new flow into the into the executive. And so, we're looking at over the next um, couple of years, um, we will do a lot more for the sport. Um, <coughs> right now, we have one athlete going to the World Championships in, in mm -hmm. Oregon, Portland, Oregon, and that is next week. Sean Gill. We have. Um, actually, one, one good thing for us, we have five athletes on Olympic scholarship um, this year, or this cycle. Mm -hmm. The last cycle, we got four. So we added one more athlete because of, of, of their performances, mm -hmm. because of their, mm -hmm. their, their move in the, in the, um, in the sport. No? And so we're on, on the, the, the bottom line or, or overall goal of it is not to just have representation at the Olympics, but to have qualified athletes, mm -hmm. at least who qualify, meet the mark, meet the standard to say, I belong here and I was not just invited here. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I guess that, that, that for me feeds into the question which I was going to ask um, both of you guys in terms of what your ambitions are, you know, with the sport or, you know, in sports in general for the future. Like, what, where do you see yourself or how do you see yourself continuing? Um, on the path that you've started. So Mia, perhaps you can start with that. Well, as, as you said, I do want to qualify for Olympics and maybe one day even win Olympics. I also want to improve my score and maybe go to a Division One school. For me, I'm going to keep training because I want to try and beat the record for the long jump. Mm. For triple jump, I may try to beat that too, but right now I'm focusing on my long jump because I know I can improve that mm -hmm. way more than I did in the competition that just went. And what's, and what's, what's it like competing again, when you're competing at the uh, regional. regional level? Mm -hmm. Well, competing at the regional level, well, it's a good experience because you get to meet a lot of people. Although most speak Spanish, there's a lot of them that speak English too. So being bilingual is a very important <laughs> skill, I realize. <laughs> but other than that, it's just fun to be there. You, you have your team, you have your mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. you can enjoy, well, it's just a different environment. You mm -hmm. can enjoy the fr enjoy meeting new people, enjoy the competition. Mm -hmm. Win or lose, it's just an just a experience so that you know that you can get better. Mm -hmm. You can use that to improve yourself and just continue on. When you guys were, were uh, in Nicaragua, did you gauge the competition? Were you watching the, the, the sport as, as it was going on and did you say, okay, that one, I need to beat she or I need to beat he? <laughs> well, yeah, many athletes that are amazing just like you. Yes. And these athletes, you love to see them because it helps you push, push mm -hmm. yourself to be the best you can be. Yeah. What do you think um, it would take for other uh, junior athletes to, well, not, yeah, well, other junior uh, 
at least that have that potential to join the association, what would you have to say to them? It's not going to be an easy road. You mm -hmm. will have some failures on the way. But what makes you a champion? You have to stay disciplined mm -hmm. and determined. A lot of determination will bring you far. Just try it out. <laughs> um, nothing beats a try in my book. Because mm -hmm. I wasn't very good at first, but I kept on doing it and I got better and better. Practice makes perfect. The one key <laughs> thing to say because Mia <coughs> Mia broke the record three times. Mm -hmm. She's know? here sitting all humble. Yeah, she <laughs> broke it. It was the um, the shot put record. Shot she broke yeah. the Central American record in, in her category three times in that one one event. So and she's here know? sitting like there's no she <laughs> have that experience. Basically, <laughs> at some point, the the court said, you know what. You have no competition, but I, I, I could leave you now. Oh, that's why she could engage the competition. She was the competition. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, um, apart from coaches, how has your, like, maybe your family or friends, how have they reacted to, to, to your success? Mm -hmm. Well, they had a lot of support from me. I'm thankful for all their love and everybody, not just my family, the whole of them is supporting me. Yeah. And I'm glad that my mom, especially, and my dad, my two parents are always behind my back. Mm -hmm same thing they're always supporting me especially my aunts and uncle mm -hmm. although they're way in the states they <laughs> always support me send me congratulations talk to me while i'm on the trip mm -hmm. my dad my stepmother they always support me as well as i came back a lot of surprises Aww. went out and just enjoyed myself what's next well i hope we go to more competition this year mm -hmm. and hopefully get good results so. yeah I'm going to continue training and just improve my score because when I went out, I didn't get my personal best okay. because I injured my ankle. But next time. So he, has, he, has, um, he has homework. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any final words and thoughts, uh, Mrs. Well, um, in terms of you, you asked them, them what next, but what next for the association? Mm -hmm. Like I said, we have, our, um, we have um, five athletes or six, okay. five athletes going to the Commonwealth Games okay. in Birmingham, England. We have one athlete going to the World Championships in, mm -hmm. in Oregon, as I mentioned before. We have the upcoming um, Central American Games, which will be in November mm -hmm. in Costa Rica, I believe. And then we also have the NACAC Championship, Senior Championship. NACAC is just the regional mm -hmm. North America, South America, and Caribbean Championships coming up in um, Grand Bahamas mm -hmm. in uh, next month. So we should have um, representation at these events on that scale. Mm -hmm. I mean, these athletes might be too young to attend some of those events because certain ages you're not able to, right. to attend. So like I said, they have a lot of years ahead of them in the sport. Mm -hmm. And of course, Mia, um, I, I look at the results of the senior championship in her in her two events, I was like, wow, two more gold medals. And, you know, <laughs> I, 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 as I say, I don't regret the decision we made as, a, as an executive not to be a part of the competition because of the, of the, the, health, the risk. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I'm grateful that these athletes were prepared for this competition last week and they were willing to go out there and do their best. And um, that is basically all we can ask of them at any time. Mm -hmm. So in closing, I just want to say to those that are out there, keep supporting these athletes mm -hmm. support it, support the, the belize athletics association i'm grateful for those who support it because mm -hmm. we had a drive we had a raffle for the to raise some funds for the for the senior competition and it was a good it was a good showing people really supported the athletes um and I, as i said uh, your um, your support is always welcome and thanks for those who did support mm -hmm. and who will continue to support us Thank you so much. But you know, whenever Belizeans go out and be ambassadors for Belize, um, we, we always do well. So I'm not surprised. And I can't wait to see um, what more you both have to offer um, the world. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. And um, we'll, stay, we'll be back with uh, training talks yes. with Gavin. Uh, <laughs> so after the break, so stay tuned.